All right. Thank you, friends, for liking and subscribing to this channel. You can go ahead and get started on this workbook with step one. We're going to discuss the presenting problem so that you can fully transform this and recode it from step one to step seven. So let's go ahead and get started now. So list your chief presenting problem or complaint. You can state the primary problem that you would like to work on by naming the desired goal or outcome that you hope to achieve. Step two, what are some recent complaints or experiences you have had related to this problem? Examine your thoughts towards this chief complaint or the presenting issue that is challenging or limiting you. Write the level of discomfort or anxiety, such as the level of distress that you feel when thinking about this unresolved emotion from one to 10, 10 being the highest and one being the lowest. If you are three or higher, it is recommended to continue with this step if you were two or lower, feel free to continue. However, you may not necessarily need to go through this step if you are already aware of it and may need to advance to step two or three. Number four, what is the emotion that services as a result of this problem? Anger, frustration, sad or depressed, hurt or grief, resentment or blame, powerless, helpless, or disempowered, victimized, Jealous or revenge, inadequate or not enough, unworthy or undeserving, guilt or shame, confusion or other. Feel free to specify. Now list the current limiting belief or negative programming that you want to overcome. What is the belief that's associated to the presenting problem? It could even be a fear. Is the problem related to a childhood program, a parent-child pattern, epigenetic or generational pattern, a perceived void such as an unmet need from early youth, generally between the age of zero to seven? And more than one answer, is also acceptable. Any voids may result in the love language type, such as quality time, perhaps separation or abandonment is a pattern or touch and affection due to inadequate affection or touch starvation and so forth. So you may look to the needs that have translated unwittingly into a love language. And remember, this is just for you for your own self-analysis and to gain more insight to decoding the presenting problem and identify any blind spots. Next, what conditions and expectations do you have about achieving your goal? Is there anything that has prevented you from fully obtaining your desired outcome? For example, I can't because X, Y, Z. So fill in the blank why you believe you cannot have what you want. This will help identify the limiting belief or attachments that result in self-sabotage. Now in one word, describe how you would feel achieving your goal, such as accomplished or freedom. This is the word to describe the solution of the unmet need of what you value and desire. And we know that it's by embodying this feeling internally that we can begin to attain it on an external level, as within, so without, correct? So continue to internalize this feeling to align to the same vibrational match or mental equivalent. Imagine feeling the result of achieving your desired outcome. Is the feeling peaceful, happy, or grateful? Identify what the result of this feeling is. 
What are you learning from this challenge? Reflect on whether this is a pattern in your life because lessons are obviously repeated, we know, until they are learned. So if we learn what we would have done differently or what we and tools we perhaps have amassed in this process, we can therefore recode the pattern. So list at least one thing you have gained, including characteristics from this challenge. Even if it's just what you've learned and what you would do differently. Are there any key players related to this challenge or presenting problem? For instance, is it related to an individual? List any or all that apply. A mother, father, spouse, sibling, child, friend, boss, or an authority figure, or other. Please specify. And has this person or problem motivated your personal growth or driven you to achieve your goals, such as a catalyst, even if it was out of spite, or to prove your worth and abilities to yourself? And how has this person or problem been instrumental to your character and made you a better person? The subconscious mind doesn't discriminate or know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So it can align you to your desire more quickly and effectively by matching the same frequency vibration to achieve the ideal outcome. It's basic quantum physics and the key to manifesting principles. So gratitude, as we know, is a transformation process. We will be delving deeper to guide you through each of these steps throughout the Panacea model and workbook. So finish this sentence. What I value or appreciate from this learning experience or opportunity is, for example, to teach me new growth and solutions. Now let's move forward to the transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. This is going to help us decode the core trapped emotion. Explain how your presenting problem is playing out in your current life. For instance, if it's related to money or to an ideal weight, how has that had an impact on your life? Has it been limiting you in any way? Please list how you have felt restricted or impacted by this. And do you recognize the same pattern in either of your parents, grandparents, or other relatives? For example, a similar psychological disorder, emotional, or behavioral pattern. Have they too wanted to transform their financial circumstances or their Ideal weight and health, for instance? Yes, no, maybe, or are you aware? Because our core beliefs are rooted in our biology as well as early childhood experiences related to our parents. With age regression, we can trace a pattern drawing from our current experience back to our early childhood, to our birth, then finally generational hardships. This isn't intended to open old wounds. However, it's designed to process unresolved trapped emotion or trauma that is still operating within subconscious programming to remove the patterns because our past shapes who we are and our present reality today. If you were raised by more than one caretaker or not raised by your biological parents, you can complete this exercise by including any unmet needs from both your biological parents as well as your caretakers. So for instance, if there's a physical or emotional abuse, this would likely correspond to a perceived unmet emotional need or void, such as a sense of emptiness causing feelings of separation, feeling different or alone, or a perceived unmet need of not feeling wanted, neglected, rejected, or abandoned if you weren't raised by your biological parents, for instance. If you were unable to feel safe in your childhood, this could result in a struggle to feel safe and secure, which is related to our root chakra. And if we don't feel secure in the world, it may also lead to codependencies or counterdependencies as a poor coping mechanism. So do you have a tendency to lean on relationships or job for security? Or do you resist asking for help to remain independent and self-reliant and not feel weak? 
there's often an association that if we ask for help, that we are in some way weak or helpless. But it is important to note that it is not any of your caretaker's responsibility to meet all of your emotional unmet needs. However, these strategies are designed to heal the childhood and epigenetic programming. You will continue to gain more in-depth techniques and insight around the subconscious programming throughout this program. And common negative emotions and beliefs resulting from unmet childhood needs when the programming was conditioned or imprinted are often associated with issues related to the following core subconscious beliefs. So identify these common core beliefs and check all that apply. And as always, deeply ponder your answers in each question and include honest self-analysis to determine the appropriate response. Belief of unworthiness, undeserving, or poor self-worth. Lacking emotional security, feeling not enough, inadequate, or incompetent. Maybe feeling like a victim or powerless, controlled by fear, overwhelmed, or anxiety, fear, suppressed emotions, conditional love, judgment, or rejected, rigid or conflicting beliefs, neglected or abandoned, emotionally disconnected or dissociation, blocked compassion and judgment, chronic depression and worry, perception of being unacknowledged, invalidated, or undervalued. Now describe some of your unmet needs in your current relationship, whether with a spouse, partner, or other primary relationship in your life. This individual may be a key player that is typically a lesson or blessing, shaping you into the person you're meant to be in your life helping you once again to identify these voids or unmet needs and therefore transmuting it. Describe some of your unmet emotional or psychological needs from your biological parents or caretakers in your childhood. Where did you desire more support or love in your life that you did not feel you were adequately receiving and desire it now in your current reality. List any similarities regarding these unmet needs from your biological parents or caretakers and in your current primary relationship. See how it's perhaps translated. For example, not feeling accepted or supported. This is often where we're learning self-love and acceptance in our life and it's always in levels and layers. So deeply examine your answers. And do you recognize a pattern or a theme? Is there a common denominator between unmet needs from early childhood into adulthood that is being revealed within relationships or events in your life from this default programming? Yes, no, maybe, or other. Please specify. And how is this unmet need or belief evident in your life today? Please provide an example. Name the parent-child pattern or the parent-child partner pattern or belief program. This could be perhaps areas where you didn't feel loved or supported that now desire from a partner. And the belief could be, I did not feel supported or loved in such and such area. Now name the epigenetic belief or pattern from your mother and father. Was this a similar pattern or belief from your mother or your father or either both? List a few examples related to the pattern in this common theme to identify your core beliefs. What ongoing circumstances tend to challenge you the most? Where do you identify the most triggers? Again, is it around financial, physical health, mental health, relationships? Identify where you feel ongoing activated triggers or challenges. And how will you choose to see this differently to reframe this belief and form a new belief? Again, for instance, learning new tools, growing, 
outgrowing, developing new insights, gaining new appreciation. What is a new belief related to the presenting problem that you would like to replace with the old limiting belief? In the next step, we will discuss the drama triangle or conflict triangle with workbook exercises and identify any other key players that we can transmute and help us heal our relationships and transform being a classic rescuer enabler, feeling like a helpless victim, or feeling like perhaps a controlling persecutor. If you need a workbook for personal or professional use, whether to render private or group sessions, you can use this quick and easy downloadable workbook. It includes holistic psychology and key psychotherapy questions for those who want to align to new outcomes and successfully recode their core beliefs and epigenetic patterns at the DNA level by addressing subconscious programming, childhood trauma, limiting beliefs, and improve their mindset by identifying new coping strategies and solutions in their life or that of their clients, or even if they want to simply recalibrate. Download the sample workbook or subscribe for monthly products and more holistic programs. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you gained value from this.